All right, the squeeze theorem. Now, it's worth noting, you probably will not see this on your test. Even in AP classes, you probably won't see it on your test. You might see it on the AP test. But in general, in college classes and high school classes that aren't too bad, although obviously if you're in high school, you're probably in AP, um, a lot of college courses in calculus, they introduce the squeeze theorem on your homework, and maybe there's one or two problems on it, and it'll be in the book, but it just doesn't seem like teachers ever put it on the test. Could be wrong on that. Definitely ask your teacher, hey, is the squeeze theorem going to be on the test? Because you might find out it will not be. Um, but if it is on your homework, whatever, there's really only two problems they can possibly give you, and those are the ones I'm about to cover. So it's not super hard to understand. Kind of funny looking, and it's got a funny name, so maybe you'll remember how to do it. But chances are, unless you're in a pretty bad AP class, you probably won't see it on the test. Don't quote me on that. Don't hate me if I'm wrong, but point is, ask your teacher, because it might turn out you're not responsible for it, you know, really. All right, so here's what I need to tell you. As a reminder, the graph of sine or cosine of x is basically just a squiggly line that goes between negative 1 and 1 forever. And as you go you know, out from the origin sideways all the way to infinity, this thing just keeps going la 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 la, just wavy, 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 all the way out to infinity. But here's that's just sine x, right? When things get crazy is when you do sine of 1 over x. Um, so sine of 1 over x we're going to get a weird squiggly thing happening. And I won't necessarily tell you why this happens. It's just that, you know how when you put 1 over 0, you get a vertical asymptote? So the graph of 1 over x kind of goes really crazy right by, right as we approach 0. Well, guess what? As we approach 0, sine of 1 over x, you're basically going to be taking the sine of infinity as you approach 0. So your sine wave if you're doing a sine of 1 over x, out here it'll kind of look like a sine wave might be expected to look. But as you get closer and closer to the origin, they start stacking up. And then as you get really close, it does this. And it just goes up and down so fast it's like a solid block of ink. And the same thing's going to happen coming from the other side. It kind of starts long, then it goes steeper and steeper, and then and it starts going up and down so fast right at the end you just can't even see it, it's a blur. So the limit of this thing as x approaches 0, it does not exist. This thing's not shooting to infinity, so it's not like one of those things where you could put down infinity as the answer, because you know it's somewhere between negative 1 and 1. Sine of x, or sine of 1 over x, whatever, the sine function never goes bigger than 1 or smaller than negative 1. But as you get towards 0, which is what we're approaching in this limit, it's going up and down like a buzzsaw so fast that there's no way to pin down exactly where it is. And the same thing will happen if you did cosine. Again, cosine of 1 over x becomes this nasty thing where it's going up and down like a crazy buzzing buzzsaw, chainsaw, whatever, so fast there's no way to pin down and say, like, ooh, the limit is this number. It's just a blur between negative 1 and 1 is all it is. And if you graph this on your graphing calculator, it, you want to get your window right, but basically it should look like this. If you mess with your window and settings and stuff, you should be able to get it to look basically like a total blur of ink in the middle. And you probably want to make your window on the tight side, like maybe between negative 1 and 1. And it depends if you're in radians or degrees, but you know, you want to have a pretty tight window, like 1 radian to negative 1 radians, or 20 degrees to negative 20 degrees, that kind of thing, like a pretty tight on the origin to get a real block of ink going. But here's the thing. So you might be wondering, hey, Chris, if this doesn't have a limit, and the sine of, a, sine of 1 over x thing never has a limit, why are we bothering putting it in this chapter, because wouldn't the answer always be no limit? Well, here's what they do. Instead of just asking you to find the limit of sine of 1 over x, they ask you to find the limit of x times sine of 1 over x. And I'll show you what that does. Or they could put an absolute value around this, or they could make it x squared. But what this does is, if we put an x out front, all of a sudden what that does is it makes the sine get smaller. So what will happen is the wave is still going to be this. It's going to become a blur. But if you have a, you know, x is also very tiny right here. So what you're doing is it's going to be a blur, but it's going to be sandwiched or squeezed. So it's going to, yeah, it's going to come in like this and have a, you know, it's going to get tighter and tighter. And it's going to start 
buzz sawing eventually, but it's going to buzz saw back and forth between these t lines that are tapering toward each other. Because even though it's a buzz sawing blur, X, when, as x approaches zero, the amplitude of that buzz sawing gets tinier and tinier because it's being multiplied by x. So if you take a buzz saw that's going between negative one and one, but then you multiply it by one millionth, then it's buzz sawing only by one millionth, right? And then when you get closer to even closer to the origin, that buzz sawing gets tighter and tighter to where it actually gets down to the buzz saw being zero height at the origin. So what so what the squeeze theorem says in like layman's terms is, hey. Even if you have something that's buzzing back and forth like a buzz saw, as long as it's back and forth buzz sawing in an incredibly narrow wind space and sort of getting funneled down to nothing, then that limit actually does exist, and that limit is right here. So the limit is zero. Same thing with cosine. So does that make sense? We have a crazy buzz saw, but because it's getting squeezed down into nothing, it's still the limit still exists. And the technical definition of the squeeze theorem is something like if the function is bound, has an upper bound that's never breached and a lower bound that's never breached, that'd be this line y equals x and y equals negative x, and this thing's buzzsawing back and forth between them, if these two things approach the same limit at x equals 0, therefore the thing that's buzzsawing back and forth between them has to also get pinched down to 0. Now as I'm listening to myself say all this, I realize how confusing it must be, and yet this is the best I've figured out how to explain this over years of tutoring this stuff. So believe me, if this is not on your test, don't bother. Now we'll see how it works. So basically you can see that what happened was if you put an X out front, it gets buzz sawed down between the lines Y equals X and Y equals negative X. But let's say we want to squeeze it down into a different shape. So instead of putting X out front, we just put x squared out front. Well now, instead of being buzz sawed down between, between these two sort of angled lines, x squared is a parabola that kind of looks like this. Right? And if you had the negative of that, it turns out you need to also draw its symmetrical version, you know, its uh, reflected version down here. So what this graph is going to look like is once again we have the crazy buzz saw. But it's going to you know, it's going to get squoze down between these two matching parabolas. But once again, because these matching parabolas sort of squish together, they come from the side and they squish down like that and meet at a point. If these two parabolas are squishing to where they actually touch, that little buzz saw is squeezed between them. It must not be moving anymore. So its limit is the same as whatever the intersection is of these two parabolas. And if you know your parabolas, you know that x squared just goes to the origin. So once again, the limit of this thing is zero. Well, what about this one? Now I tried to make I tried to gussy this one up and make it a little bit more confusing. Instead of putting a one in the numerator, I put a pi upstairs. Instead of putting just an x out front, I put a three. But all that does is change the equation of the line it's squishing between. The pi didn't do anything. This thing is still a raging buzzsaw as we approach the origin. But the three out front makes the line steeper. So instead of the line being like a 45 degree angle with slope one, instead it's going to be a steep line, like a wide funnel. And the equations of these lines are going to be y equals 3x and y equals negative 3x. So that's one question I guess I could ask you is, hey, you know, what's the equation of the lines that this thing is squeezing between? You just take this and you do plus or minus. So it's going to be plus or minus 3x will be the two lines that it's squeezing between. But once you've drawn your steep lines, still the exact same situation we had before, raging buzzsaw, meet funnel. It's just got to squish down in between there. So it's still going to get squished down. These, even though those two lines are steeper, they still meet at the origin. And therefore, anything that's buzzing back and forth between these two has to also get squished down to the origin. And therefore, its limit is 0 when it gets there. All right, so these are as bad as you get. The thing you really want to keep your eye out for is if you have a cosine of something and x is downstairs, that's the kicker. That's what tells you for sure you're dealing with a squeeze theorem. That x downstairs is what made this thing go back and forth like a buzzsaw. Cosine x, just a gentle wave going on forever. Cosine of 5x, cosine of x squared. Actually, that does something slightly different. I think that one will actually get worse as you go further out. But the point is, if x is approaching 0 and you got x downstairs, 
you can see how you're taking a cosine of infinity, and that's the thing that should tip off your your spidey senses like, whoa, something's wacky, you know, is happening in this problem. All right, but on the bright side, you probably won't see this on your test, so virtual high five for everyone on that one.